and we have another very interesting topic in, in our AI concept. Um, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Ritesh Kanji, who is the CEO and founder of Augmented Startups. Um, Ritesh has a, is the director and founder, as I said, of the company, a tech training company that specializes in AI and augmented reality. He has a following of over 45,000 subscribers on YouTube and around 42,000 students on YouTube. Is it Udemy? Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome Ritesh. Thank you. Hi everybody, it's great to be here, thank you for coming. As Larry mentioned, my name is Ritesh Kanji, CEO and founder of Augmented Startups, and I also qualified masters uh, as an electronic engineer from the U University of Johannesburg. So, if you think about computer vision, it's quite an uncommon term when you think about artificial intelligence and financial services. So, I'm going to first talk to you about that on computer vision, as well as tell you about financial services, and then see how they fit in together. So computer vision focuses on the automatic extraction, analysis, and understanding of useful information from an image or a multitude <coughs> of images, or like a video. You can use it for modeling environments, so in the case of navigation for autonomous man-killing drones. Okay, not kidding, just, uh, <laughs> just drones. You can also use it for surveying of an area. Mostly used for detecting events for surveillance. In the case of criminal activity, abandoned objects, facial recognition of people, and general counting of people. I'm sure you've all seen those apps where you can take a picture of a uh, form, where there's an invoice or receipt and convert it into an editable document. And there's also control processes where you're able to use it for self-driving car applications and for robotics. Now, computer vision has a lot of subfields, but we'll mostly be focusing on artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning with regards to cognitive vision as well as computer intelligence. So looking at financial services, the two most important things is regulation as well as your customer broker experience. Let's take a look at the impact of aims of regulation where we want to reduce financial crime. Now, we want to try and avoid the case where you have an honorable individual who siphons money out of uh, taxpayers' money into his private homestead in KZN. So we want to try and reduce, prevent fraud and prevent money laundering. Uh, you also want to protect your customers. Now there's a multitude of scams out there. You've all heard about the one uh, prince who died and you are the lucky one to inherit all these millions. Uh, but in order to get those millions, uh, you have to pay a fee. So that's just one concern. And we would also like to promote efficient markets as well as maintain market confidence. Now with regards to the client broker experience, if you have your client over here and your product over here, you want to try and reduce the friction as much as possible and so that your client can benefit from your product as soon as possible. And this requires an efficient operation or process and optimal use of resources. So let's take a look at how computer vision can fit in with financial services. But first, let me tell you about a nice guy. His name is Jacob. He's a 53-year-old businessman from Cape Town. He's quite happy today. And he has some money <coughs> that he wants to invest in property. So using the latest and greatest in AI on his phone, he's able to take a picture of each room in the house and as well as the house on the outside. And Using that with numerical and categorical data, he's able to estimate the price of the house. Now, doing this, he feels like, like a boss, you know. He says, okay, I'm able to either see whether I'm paying too much for the house or getting the house at a bargain. So with the new house, uh, Jacob sees that he also needs to furnish it. And we all know the story, the usual story, where you buy a product, you get the receipt, you put it very carefully, you put it somewhere in the cupboard or in your safe or somewhere where you keep your receipts. Put it very safely, but a few months down the line, you lose the damn thing. So what Jacob does is state of the art AI on his phone, and he takes a picture of all the appliances and equipment in his house. And it, using the magic of AI, he's able to estimate the cover amount. Now, uh, Jacob receives a call from his son, Johannes. So Johannes was driving along the road, he, was, he rolled out his windows, sunglasses on, driving his VW, cruising, with his subwoofers blasting as well. 
and all of a sudden a taxi comes in front of him and crashes into him. But lucky, Johannes was survived. He gets out of his car, he takes a picture of his car, of the vehicle, and is able to use the AI to automatically generate the level of the damage as well as estimate costs that he can give to his insurance provider. And it also provides a decision support of whether to replace or repair the car. So after this whole debacle was over, uh, Jacob comes to pick up his son Johannes and they drive along back home. And Jacob sees this really lovely dress for his wife. Now instead of going into the Woolies or the, the store that he usually, usually goes to, he can take a picture of with his phone and it allows him to compare which dress he wants to buy for his wife. And he can instantly purchase it in time for his uh, wife's anniversary. And this basically allows you to reduce the friction as we mentioned earlier and creates a mentality of see now, buy now. And with that, with the house that he has to buy, uh, Jacob also has to get his documents regulated. This all happens within an AI within the cloud, and he takes a picture of his face and get that authenticated as well. However, remember I was telling you about Jacob, the 53-year-old businessman from Cape Town? Uh, just a quick raise of hands, who think that this picture is real? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got one over there. <laughs> So, uh, Jacob is actually a fake. An AI model called Generative Adversarial Networks was used to generate these, uh, these faces. And no, that's not his wife over there. Uh, so, Generative Adversarial Networks, or GANs, as they call it, can also be used for uh, image style transfer. We can convert a horse into a zebra, zebra into a horse, apples to oranges, oranges into apples, and you can let your imagination go wild. This is quite great for data set generation. Let me tell you about uh, deepfakes. If you don't know what it is, let me show you this video. We're entering an era in which our enemies can make it look like anyone is saying anything at any point in time, even if they would never say those things. So, uh, for instance, they could have me say things like, uh, I don't know, uh, Killmonger was right, or uh, Ben Carson is in the sunken place, or how about this, simply, President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. Now, you see, I would never say these things, at least not in a public address, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. This is a dangerous time. Moving forward, we need to be more vigilant with what we trust from the internet. And it's a time when we need to rely on trusted news sources. It may sound basic, but how we move forward in the age of information is going to be the difference between whether we survive or whether we become some kind of fucked up dystopia. Thank you. And stay woke, bitches. So as you can see, we have uh, Jordan Peele, which is the actor, and he's able to control uh, ex-US President Obama's facial movements. Uh, this also looks to the human eye legitimate. So imagine if this technology can go into the wrong, uh, wrong person's hands or get in the hands of the wrong organization. You could probably use that to control Trump and make him do, say or do things, you know, to start world war. Or he can use it to unban Huawei uh, and you know, continue using their phones. This is quite scary, it's like, in, especially in the financial services industry, you would want to be aware of this kind of technology and make sure that you actually meet up in person rather than over a video call may be the, the means in future. Okay, so looking at the applications and tools of how to make all this possible, we start off with object detection, which as it is, is detecting objects. We can use it for people in car counting, tracking objects, video surveillance, as well as anomaly detection. So over here we can see that we're using an AI to detect cars and track them and then have a simple link counter for that. Object segmentation is one level higher than object detection. So we, instead of detecting via boundary boxes, we uh, detect them on a pixel level. So we're able to segment people from people, people from the pavement, pavement from the road, road from cars, and so on and so forth. Now remember I was telling you about Johannes Jacobson who crashed his car. We can use the same uh, object segmentation technology to highlight the areas of damage of the car as well as the intensity. And over here, this is our implementation of uh, pothole detection. So you can use pothole detection for, uh, you can correlate that data for a particular road versus claims 
and then see what, what the correlation is between the two. Now this is my favorite, which is uh, pose estimation. So pose estimation is a useful condensed representation of the human body, and you're able to do action and behavioral analysis. There's a lot of money that's, that goes into understanding humans, <coughs> how we, uh, what we do, how we operate, where we go, places, what time, and everything like that. So let me show you a quick video of our implementation of using pose estimation. So you can see it works quite well detecting a, a variety of people in the crowd. Uh, if you decide, we also created a fall detection app. So if you decide to throw yourself over like this, uh, you can see whether you're falling or not. <laughs> Use for estimating yoga poses, and you can show off to your friends that you are actually doing planking correctly. Over here, we just have a simple pe person counter or people counting app. I wish I could do that. <laughs> okay, so just a bit about us. We're going to start us, which is a subsidiary of uh, our parent company, Lumina Innova, PTY Limited. These are the courses that we teach. Uh, we teach mostly in uh, object detection, object segmentation, deep learning on Raspberry Pi, augmented reality, as well as machine learning. And we teach these courses on YouTube, where we have over 45,000 subscribers. 3.4 million lifetime views. We teach students from, on Udemy as well. We got around, I'd say around 42,000 students, 20 courses. And most of our students are based globally, with the majority of them residing in America, India, and across the EU. So our vision is we want to be the go-to source for education and training in artificial intelligence. At the moment, we just started out in computer vision, but we'd like to uh, progress to other areas of AI. And why are we going to do this? Well, the faster we learn, the sooner we can collaborate and in building a better and more awesome future and to help create a world where machines understand the world we live in and to create a symbiotic cohabitation. These are my contact details if you can get hold of me. We are open to uh, sponsorships and we can also co-instruct on courses to get if you're interested in exposure as well. And that's about it. Thank you for listening.